Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, show number 403. I'm your host, Lauren Gray, and welcome to beautiful Maastricht, Netherlands. We just had a wonderful time enjoying King's Day here. If you're not familiar with the holiday as it relates to the Netherlands, it's well worth looking up. And of course, if you find yourself anywhere near the Netherlands uh, during King's Day, um, for King's Day, I should say, uh, any place in the Netherlands will do. Although the king does choose one city in which he and the family will walk through to see everyone. Uh, that was in Rotterdam. We were originally going to be in Rotterdam. We decided, no, we're going to flip things around and do them straight. For, and that's where we ended up being, which was wonderful because it had a certain charm to it. Um, I'll be sharing more of things of my travels and so forth via the, actually the live show because a lot of the inspiration of our conversations, as in today as well, is based on firsthand traveling again, international travel. It's been a few years since I've traveled out of the country and uh, due to COVID, obviously, as all of us had. And um, it's a great chance to go from the theoretical in the sense of conversations of being high altitude, marketing plans, strategy, multi-properties, different destinations, so forth. And the reality of what it's like to be a tourist, to be a guest and to travel and to rely upon the things that we work with all the time, the, the, the instruments of communication that we as marketers put out, which is the inspiration of my conversation today. Uh, and that is why you need to shop your own marketing. And this came from kind of a comparison as to the realities of what I'm experiencing versus all the research that was done by us prior to our travel to be aware of what we're going to be doing, where we're going to be staying, what will we do while we're there? What should we consider to do? Uh, things to avoid, planning and preparations and so forth. And the contrast between what we were fed from the marketing perspective, when, as we do for our own properties, solicit through the discovery process that, hey, we are a point of consideration for you. We're a place that should be a part of your planned uh, itinerary. Uh, you should begin to focal point us as the relationship to all the things that you're finding and discovering by offering content from us about what we offer as a value proposition to the places of interest and things of our destination. Um, that's wonderful for what we do for marketing and it's critical to what we do for marketing. And I'm uh, being honest and, and truthful about that content is a high relevancy, of course. We don't wanna say we're close to something we're not, that we're relevant to something that we're not, uh, that we're just riding on the coattails of something that's somewhere around in our destination market, but not exactly as relevant as other places might be. Don't not be that place. Uh, don't act like you're the place to go to for these things when, in fact, you're not. You're not close enough to it to in comparison to other properties that would be. I mean, what other way? Coffee is awesome. Um, so with that, let's kind of go through the things and things I was thinking about when it comes to why you need to shop your own marketing. I find during the processes of my relationship with clients and things that I did prior to having clients, really being responsible for, for my own organizations, uh, that we just get into this de facto, let's get it out there. This is our plan strategy. This is what we're going to feature for this time, whether it's a seasonal shift of business demand like summer or spring break. Um, let's get our content out there. Let's show pretty flowers for spring break and, uh, you know, uh, the opportunity to go over and enjoy our destination and generic this and generic that and just really shove it out there. Now, we've talked a lot about targeting and persona development and, and, and creating content relevant to the audience that you're speaking to and so forth. But there's a difference between still feeding tailored content like, hey, you know, dynamic name Lauren, here's your personalized email from dynamic name property related to dynamic offer for dynamic event. These types of generalized marketing is attention grabbing and great as an initial threshold to your workflow, like get their attention because really the ad is, as we've always said, is to solicit an action. It's not there to give a complete story. It's not there to give a complete uh, detail as to what the offer is or why this offer should be relevant. It's simply to enact an engagement that will allow us to continue those people through our funnel of engagement. Now that they interacted with whatever we solicited them, now it comes to more relevancy. What do we know of why they clicked? What did they click on? What did they click on relevant to what we were talking about? Is it a far away event or just a seasonal interest? Or is it a particular event that's up close or far away? That will change our frequency of our advertisement uh, for our retargeting. We change channels. Do we need to explain more of what the interest is? Or by them clicking on this ad, 
Do they already know what they're interested in? And I want to pause there for a second because there is a difference. Uh, simply clicking on discovering events in a destination. Oh, I wonder what that is. I wonder if it's relevant to our time. Uh, I wonder if it's something I would be interested in doing. Doesn't mean I'm there for that reason. And this is where retargeting can sometimes go wrong because if it's an auto trigger that because I, as I refer to King's Day here in the Strait, if I, by looking at it, now solicit you as a property to begin to heavily retarget me because of the the span of me looking versus the event itself is very compressed. So you're going to be like, wow, this person's interested in King's Day Strait. I need to get in front of them as often as I can to remind them that they should really look at my offers and my opportunities that I'm providing. And it can turn into an annoyance when really it was just a discovery process. How did they enter in? And this goes back to the layering of the data that we have. There's a difference between helpful content, as we talked about with social engagement storylines, that's generalized, helpful. Don't forget to do these things while you're in, in town. Don't forget these places to visit. Uh, if you're thinking about coming to the market, these are things that are, are highlights of our destination. That's generalized. Having a, this is our King's Day offer, makes a different pattern of retargeting. Yes, it's all about King's Day. Okay, I'm looking at King's Day and trying to educate myself as to what Mistrait does for it. Is this something I'm interested in doing versus staying in Rotterdam? Whatever. And then there's the, I'm looking for particular offers related to King's Day. I've made a, a decision to move forward with being more particular about my interest in uh, coming to Mistrait versus staying in Rotterdam. Those patterns of targeting need to be different. Those frequencies need to be different. The content needs to be different. Simple discovery. Remember, we were talking about three shows ago uh, about discovery versus discovering. The difference, the nuance of it, okay, uh, is very similar to what we're talking about now and saying, look, I'm interested in knowing more about something versus I'm knowing, wanting to know more about what your offer is. So if they click on your offer, it does show an interest in particularly focusing in on the idea of staying with you. Now that frequency and that content is more specific to you, what you're offering, what the value proposition of what your offer is in comparison to the event that they're interested in and so forth. Compared to the generalized discovery, okay, of an event and just the curiosity associated with, is it worthwhile my interest? That frequency can be helpful in content that is still more generalized, not just saying that you have an offer, but talking about the things that make it so special, the other ancillary things that you can do while you're here for the event. That comparison of contrast only happens if you shop it yourself. If you took an imaginary trip, I used to, um, uh, when much, speaking much more heavily at conferences and, and corporate events and so forth than I do now, uh, is I talked about the idea that uh, you have to plan a trip. If you really want to know how the world works to what we do, plan a trip to a place that you've never been to a place that you've never stayed, figure out what it is you would do if you were there and what it would take to get around and everything else. This fictitious, unfamiliar territory, okay, uh, really helps you understand the frustrations that our guests have with what we think is clear content, but really it's not. It's familiar content. We're so intimate with our content about our hotel and resort, our destination, that it's just assumed that people are familiar in the same context. It's a terrible thing. It's, it's selling to oneself. This makes sense to me. So let's put this in an ad. That's not necessarily the case. What as often it is, is you have to take it from the perspective of if this was unfamiliar to me, what do I need to lay as groundwork before I start talking in these tones? It's one of the reasons why I used to, when I ran hotels, love to bring on people that hadn't worked in the hotel industry. Their quote, nativity, uh, their naiveness um, was an asset because it was like, as you spent more time in our industry, the more you got tainted into rationalizing the problems from the perspective of having to fix them compared to the guest that only has to experience them. Uh, I often say that, you know, for, for a guest to walk in and not have someone immediately behind your front desk or to see that there's only one person behind the front desk and a line of people coming in, they don't understand why you wouldn't have more people. They wouldn't understand why that person is behind the desk. 
And you as a hotel, you realize is that this was a anticipated walk-in environment or whatever the reason causation of it is, you rationalize it because you're familiar with the circumstances because you live those circumstances. But that uh, nativity, uh, that naiveness is a way of clarity for your marketing. Uh, it's always fun to hand over advertisement to someone that isn't really as interested in what you're making the advertisement for and say, does this make sense? And for them to honestly look at it and go, I don't get it. What are you trying to tell me? That's gold of response. It's like, yeah, it's a sample of one. And yeah, that doesn't mean everybody's going to react the same way. And on and on and on. That's the rationalization of us doing marketing is that we always think through all the variations to what we're familiar with. But at the end of it, it's the person, the guest, whose first exposure is to this. I'm not an expert on the straight Netherlands. Uh, for most of you, you probably don't even know where this city is. It is a remarkable city and the history of the city and its location between Belgium and Germany and being in the Netherlands and the juxtaposition. Matter of fact, there's a place just outside the city that's the three points, kind of like the four points that are in the United States and the four states. There's a three points of countries that you can stand on and you're literally in Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands at the same time. Neat place. But the blend of the dialects, the languages, the cultures, and you think about the history of this place back and forth between Spanish rule and, and, and the Flemish and the Dutch, Protestant, Catholic. And yes, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but that's the neat part. That's the part of being interested in a place and being begin to discover the things that make it interesting. That's why you need to shop your own marketing, because does that resonate with the, the, the process that guests go through in your destination? Uh, the uh, wonderment of like, well, that's really cool. Didn't know that was there. We should do this while we're there. Um, Flip2 has their, disco their, their discovery program where now when you look at a booking engine for their properties that they, they have as clients, in addition to the dates that you said you're interested in, it shows you all these events that are happening during your stay and around your stay so that you make make better decisions that you don't miss the biggest ball of twine saying, oh, wow, the concert that would be really cool to go to is literally the weekend after. Why don't I just shift my stay if I can? First, let me go check on tickets. And look, there's a link to go check on tickets. This familiar connectivity of working through your marketing as your guest perception helps you make sure that the path is not broken, that the chain is common sense that it's not a leap of faith that a guest has to go from where they are to what you want them to know. That ability to look at, are you feeding in proper proportion based on their interest, not ramming it down their throat with the accelerated, let me get to the point where you wanna buy something. We do that so often with our marketing. Hi, we hope you're interested in our destination. And the next word is great, by the way, my offer. Mm -hmm, stop. It's a progression of conversation. It's a, it's a relationship building that comes from the discovery and the education and awareness to interest and then eventually to the conversion potential if everything that they find is what they want and they choose this is what they want to do and where they want to stay. Uh, that's why when you shop your own marketing, it's important that you just don't do generic call to actions. Book now, buy this, here's our offer. It's a check mark on a lot of people's lists, especially when you start getting at corporate level and beyond. Do we set that, that ad campaign for summer? Yeah, yeah, it's all set. And all it is is an old off the shelf crap that you did the year before, polished some dates, probably didn't even change the graphics, shoved it back into the same ad set campaign you built last year because you don't want to spend more money rebuilding a new one this year. You figure if it worked last year, it's probably going to work this year. Turn it on, gear it up and let it run. And you wonder why people come in with uh, artificial expectations, lack of education, disappointment. They don't know what to expect or what they expect is not what they receive. And all of this is done by people making decisions because the last time that they looked at what they were doing, they didn't look it through the eyes of the person that needed to understand the content. I can tell you firsthand from travels that uh, there's been some wonderful, unexpected joys. That same, you know, well, I'm familiar with it, so it's no big deal to me, is a wonderment to somebody that's new. You know, the old streets, the cobbled streets, sloping roads, tilting buildings, older buildings, history of buildings. To the locals, it's a part of their daily life. It's not part of what they constantly talk about. Now, of course, they talk about the history of the city, and of course, they talk about the, the things that, that make up the city. But for them, that's 
old news, just like we are for our properties. We talk about things kind of, oh, yeah, yeah, there's a waterfall that you can go look at. Everyone loves looking at it. And for other people, when they walk up to it, like, oh, my God, this is the most beautiful waterfall. Um, I remember that trip to Colorado and saw something like that that was just one of those offhanded comments that somebody at the front desk made. And I'm like, wait a minute, there's a waterfall? Really? Oh, yeah, you can just walk to it. If you walk out of the you know, walk around, it was the Breckenridge. And it was like their own private waterfall. And uh, uh, Broadmoor, sorry, Broadmoor. And um, it was just amazing. And and from that, uh, I said, why don't you guys advertise that more? Oh, it's a, it's in our brochures and stuff. And sure it is. You go look and it's like, yeah, there's this, there's this, there's this. Oh, yeah, waterfall. Blah, blah, blah. But it was not highlighted. Now, I know that isn't a highlight for everybody. But the idea of it is with our ability now to market and persona market and define interests, you know, unique things to do while you're here or things that other places don't have that we do. Those criteria create the uniqueness of the content that should be inclusive to the engagement of your guest. Again, discovery versus discovering. Are they just interested in finding out what there's to do or are they interested specifically and wanting to go over and move that the specific interest into a call to action? There's a difference in the content like we talked about. Um, I, I keep using the word communication. That's what marketing is. Marketing is communicating. It's conveying what we know to somebody who may not know it or is looking to understand it. Uh, like I said, firsthand experiences for our travels. Um, you, you, you know the location on a map. You, you know the, the room. And if, of course, good photos of the room help the anticipation of the, of the context of the room. You know, and one of the first things you do whenever you get into your new room is, does it look like the pictures? Is this what we thought it was going to be? It's always pleasant to find out that it's bigger or nicer uh, than what you thought. Or to the negative, it's a little darker or not as what you thought. Or it's a, the, the pictures were definitely expanded in their elongation to make it look larger than what it really is. So the reality of travel it doesn't mean this is a disappointment. It, 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 well, I mean, it doesn't mean it's a it's a break. It's a, um, a, a breaking breaking point. It's just a matter that it's a slight disappointment. Um, it's one of those things that is the part of the adventure. But then again, there's also based on the types of travel, there's required additional information. There are uh, demographic sets that don't need to worry about uh, where the medical facilities are. There's def definitely demographic sets that don't need to worry about where uh, pet facilities are, pet stores and or pet hospitals and or whatever. And how do you do this? And, you know, so little things like if you were to call for uh, emergency services, what is the number? These details, this content is things that we can communicate in our messaging. Um, and this now is even easier with the advent of uh uh, cognitive AI and the ability to generative AI and being able to create massive amounts of content that is indexable, discoverable, and usable. Where before you're like, well, that's great. I'm not going to be writing a war and peace novel for all of our content. Well, you don't have to. You can make an AI platform do that. You create the context, supply the data that you need to be included with it, which is not hard. It's literally your bullet points of things you want to be included in and say, go write me a blog post or a web page uh, on content about this. And now you have a page of people that have medical, uh, that uh, special needs travelers. This is where you go. What's what you do? Wheelchair accessibilities, uh, amenity services for those that have uh, physical uh, limitations and needs. Um, if you're traveling with a pet, this is what you should know. These are where the facilities are. This is where the pet stores are. This is what we have. This is a list of brands in case you're looking at transitioning what your dog eats or your cat eats to what they have available over here. If flying internationally, these are the things that you need to be considering for your international travel. See, these are communications that happen from content. There's much about marketing as marketing is. Marketing isn't about just the action of conversion. Of, that is a critical component of marketing, but communication is an asset of marketing. It is literally the core of what you're doing in marketing. Um, it's also important that not just to shop your own marketing, but audit what you're sharing. Go through what you've had, go through the content that you provide. Is it as current as it should be? Uh, nothing's worse than old data. Oh yeah, we used to have a restaurant. Yeah, it's closed now. Oh yeah, we used to be open on Mondays for the restaurant. Now we don't know. That would have been good to know that, you know, you're not gonna wanna share negative news like, oh, by the way, we closed the restaurants on Monday. Um, you know, 
because it might can't make some cancellations like, oh, well, if you don't have a restaurant on Monday and I'm only there Monday and I was planning on eating there, then I got to change my hotel. That's the detriment of it. That's But the accuracy of it is a lot better than the disappointment you create with guests because if a guest comes in, it's like, okay, go in the restaurant. Oh, yeah, it's closed Monday. Wait a minute. You know, it's, now, it's, now it's a negative to you. And one, you've lost the lifetime value of that potential for the guest. And two, you've created a, a, a negativity that might begin to cascade other things because in our socially shareable world, those disappointments get shared. Um, also, when it comes to what you share for content, make sure that you're just not ripping off old data from somebody else. It's kind of a domino effect. Uh, you leave static old data up and you take somebody else's static old data and you put it in as data that you're sharing about them. Like the restaurant Pepe around the corner or the restaurant Antonio around the corner has this beautiful cannoli or this has this beautiful uh, uh, pizza or something like this and they don't have them anymore or their hours are changed or they're out of business and you didn't actually know to change your content. Whoever put that content on your website may not even be there anymore. And the people that are there now don't know where the, the, that content even exists on the website. But as a user, I saw it come in and, and I go around the corner and Antonio Pepe is now uh, a telephone store. I come back and go, hey, your website says there's an Italian restaurant. Go, oh, that closed a month ago, two months ago, six months ago. Why do you have it on your website? That kind of auditing is a constant perpetual motion activity. And it's not just a checkbox from a corporate or exec level team that says, do we have content about our local restaurants? Great, check, good, we're done. So that when somebody says, hey, you know, we have a guest that's upset that uh, uh, one of the restaurants that was on our list was, was closed. Oh, well, no, too bad, you know, but there's other restaurants on that list, I can go find those. Calloused, insensitive, and not what you want. But for them, they have to deal with so many things from a corporate level to defend their perspective a little bit, is they have to go over and say, I can't fight every one of them. The only way I can walk on water is to run really fast. I can't get delved into one of these things. Then they try to make a great strategy of like, well, how are we going to correct all of this? Because this can, this, maybe if they're a smart person, they might say, well, this is maybe systemic of other issues. We have to audit all of our content. Now it gets into expenses and it gets large because they try to solve it for everybody because they solve it for one. The other hotels are going over saying, hey, how about us? You're doing it for one for a problem. How do we know our, do we just don't have a problem waiting to happen or nobody's reported the issue. And next thing you know, it turns into a large budgeting thing. It gets slowed down. It gets rolled into next year. Nobody wants to expand a budget and be held accountable for it. So they kick the can down the road. And that's how these things build up. And that's why the next time somebody says, hey, Antonio's isn't open around the corner. They're like, yeah, we know. We're sorry. Our website says that. But we haven't been able to get it taken off the website. Because the people at the property don't control the website. They don't control the content. They've handed to the people that they said that they were told to hand it to. Those people handed it up or whatever. And it's just not getting dealt with. You have to act on it. You have to shop your fulfillments, clarify the accuracy, maintain its authenticity and its correct data, and continually move forward with it. If you keep maintenancing things as they go forward, it saves the cost of replacing things, as you do with all things. Proper maintenance saves proper replacement. Okay, so there we have it. That kind of covers a lot of what I wanted to cover today in relationship to the idea that you need to shop your own marketing uh, to evaluate your communications, your content and communications, the reasons for you, the content you're putting up there, the accuracy of the content that you're up there, and to ensure that you're always maintaining an awareness of what you're sharing and an awareness of what should be shared, making sure you listen to your feedback of your guests saying, wow, you know, I really, I, I like staying with you all and so forth, but you should really talk about that restaurant around the corner. That, that place is amazing. You know, I didn't even see it on your website. Write it down, get it to the person that they know will make the action to go and say, we need to get content from them. And then don't rip old content. Go back into them and make sure that the content is accurate. Literally, go to the restaurant. Hey, guys, on your website, is, is this your menu? Is this correct menu? Is that a new menu, old menu? Is this really how many people make reservations? Is this really the pictures of your food? See what that is. Uh, the corrective way that Google does it and so forth is you see these posts, but they also see the time and the, and the, and the year and the month that it was posted so if you obviously as a user you know if there's a picture of lasagna but it's five years old unless they're a traditional restaurant that doesn't change their menus very often and they keep that as a mainstay there's an on on off chance that it may or may not be on the menu and it certainly may or may not be the same as what the picture shows these kinds of up-to-date things are required you you research those things those fulfillments that you're offering on your website you audit what you're sharing for content you communicate 
the data that is the most useful for people. And your generic call to actions are really just incentives for conversion only when targeted to the people that are at that stage of interest that they under, want to understand what you're offering about what they've already displayed interest in, not that they're just discovering an interest in something. Uh, and that the, the bane of all this, of course, is if you just do default marketing, take it off the shelf from last year, dust off the dates, throw it back into the same ad campaign you ran last year, expecting the same results. That's static and poor. We kind of say that about websites every year as well. So there you have it. Uh, for those of you watching on uh, TV today, Roku, Google, Amazon, Apple, uh, thank you so very much for doing so on our hospitalitychannel.tv uh, website as well. Or I should say, um, uh, yeah, well, hospitality, that's our I Love Real Rooster show. We run live on it as well. We also uh, simulcast on Twitch for those that use their uh, media centers, their Game Boys and so forth. Not Game Boys, but their, their uh, uh, PS5s and uh, uh, Xboxes for their media. And then also, uh, if you're watching a simulcast on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube, thank you so very, very much for watching us. We will have an audio podcast that recaps a little bit of our highlights of the live show today. And also, we're going to get into specific tools related to this auditing process I'm talking about, how to evaluate and the, audit, uh, the, the review of your content and how to um, look at uh, the ways to create content that is more relevant and accurate and how to pull data correctly and so forth. We're going to go through some tools for that. So until next week, which will actually be in a different country next week. So uh, we're reporting from live from another location. Um, my name is Lauren Gray. Thank you for the privilege of your time. And we look forward to talking to you next week.